Hello and welcome to this week's podcast episode. You are listening to your host, Lede, on the Flexible Systems for Mom podcast. All right, you guys, give me a little grace with that. I will be changing the name of my channel and podcast just to make it easier for people to know what we do here. So today we're going to be talking about how do you stick to your plan when you are working through adversity? During my Vlogmas series, this is a question that kind of trickled in at the last minute and I wasn't able to address it through Vlogmas, but I wanted to talk about it here. So if this is something that you have questions about or you struggle with, I want to share kind of like the mindset that I've learned to adapt in order to be able to stick with my plan through adversity. And let me let you guys know now, it's not perfect, but I will share with you how I approach it. I feel like before I really got consistent with my systems that I used to run my home, this used to be something that I would think about a lot, you know? Um, Honestly, anytime I experienced adversity or things that kind of threw off my plan, I would use it as a sign that it was time for me to surrender, that it was time for me to give up, and that this is not the season in my life that I'm supposed to be doing this task, whatever it was. It could be a new routine for my health that I wanted to keep up with. It could be a homekeeping routine. It could be something for my hobbies. It could be um, a group or something that I wanted to sign up for or host or be a part of. It could be anything. And if I felt like I was experiencing resistance, that would be my sign that it wasn't meant to be. And then I would give up and put it aside or feel like I have to wait until another time to make this into a reality. And the consequences of that is that I often felt like a martyr a little bit. Like I have to sacrifice everything that I want, you know, in order to, you know, be a good mom. It also made me feel just very frustrated and unaccomplished after after several years of having this attitude. You know, I talk about this story a lot on my channel, but I feel like there was a point where I would just look back and feel like, wow, like you really haven't accomplished much in these last couple of years. And I think that for me, it was because I had this expectation that anytime I have a goal or anytime I have a plan that it should flow smoothly And if it didn't, like I would just give up. And what I was finding is that more often than not, I was experiencing pushback. I was experiencing adversity. And so this has really had over the, over time, I really had a shift in my mindset um, about having plans and having pushback. And I've really had to transition from thinking that it's the norm for everything to flow smoothly and that every once in a while I'll have these exceptional periods where things are bumpy. I've had to switch that mindset to be the complete opposite that I should actually make my plans. I should actually wake up knowing that things are going to pop up. You know, that's life, especially when you're a family of six between one of us, something's going to come up and when things go smoothly that's actually the exception that's actually the special unicorn is things going smoothly and i find that when i adopted this mindset instead that things begin to work out a lot better for me instead of creating a plan where i existed in this perfect world where nothing ever went wrong except a couple of times a year and I based my plan in reality, like this is my current situation and this is what I'm dealing with. I just felt like I was setting myself up for more success and I was also getting my mindset and expectations correct, which allowed me to kind of stick with whatever it was that I was trying to stick with. So for this case, my home management, but I've had other areas in my life where I've been able to show up and stick with things because I've 
put it into my plan that I will have pushback. I will have resistance and that's okay because I have created a plan that takes that in mind. So I feel like there are a couple of advantages to switching over to this kind of mindset, this mindset that I'm a freaking mom of four, okay? Something's gonna come up and I need to set myself up accordingly. For me, I feel like it helps me just not experience as much disappointment. You know, when I just was in those phases where I could just load stuff on my planner and feel like I had these expectations that I'm gonna get 50 things done today and then maybe I got two done before, you know, somebody got sick at school and I had to stop what I was doing to go handle that. I feel like I just experienced so much disappointment when I had, you know, overly booked my calendar and then I couldn't show up for it. But now with the mindset that I have now, I, I feel like I don't experience that as much because I don't put like a large dramatic amount of things on my to-do list, which we'll talk about in just a moment. I'll talk about the tactic for that. Another benefit of this mindset is that I honestly feel like this mindset is what sets people apart. People who are the doers, people who go after their dreams, I feel like they already know that they're going to experience resistance and like that's just a part of their genetic makeup. They're like, bring it. Like, I'm gonna figure it out. I trust that I can problem solve. I trust that I can get through this and I'm not gonna give up just because of resistance. Whereas like people who are fantasizing and waiting for this perfect time in life where things never go wrong before they could start, you know, I feel like that's actually the mentality that holds people back. And then when they get started, as soon as they experience their first hiccup, they're done. They're like, forget about it. And so I feel like people who are just like, they understand the game, they understand that resistance is a part of the game. Like those are the people who show up, who get things done and who are thus rewarded. Not because they created whatever it is that they're creating without resistance, but because they were willing to show up, to stick it out. And you know, it's kind of like, if you're just there, you know, when the opportunity arises, they're more likely to be rewarded just because they were there. They were in the playing field, they were in the game. So I work with a lot of small business owners. And so it's been really eye-opening for me as someone who, you know, may aspire one day to have my own business because I definitely fell into this mindset with, you know, my YouTube channel starting, you know, finding ways to produce income streams with my YouTube channel and I'm just waiting for everything to be perfect and the stars to align and I'm just finding that that wasn't happening and so when I started my job you know it's just been very cool to work with small business owners and it's just like they know what's up they know what it is and the reason that they have things popping and going is not because they have perfect businesses that's why they come to us you know because they need help but because they're willing to live in that imperfection and they're willing to be there in the resistance and they're not you know gonna run away because they have adversity or because they experience something that's difficult they're willing to problem solve they're willing to see what the opportunities are they're willing to get help and they're willing to just find whatever way possible to make it work and they're like we have a business and as of now we have a business and we have a business until we don't and so that's kind of like the attitude that I feel like we need to take for our plants adversity is going to happen so instead of pretending that it won't how do we make room for it in our systems so from this podcast episode on I don't want to ask you to be pessimistic that's not where this is going I'm not telling you to be a negative thinker I'm just asking you to um, get off of the like rainbow unicorn puffy cloud Actually, you're not even on it. You're waiting to get on that puffy cloud. 
before you think things can go well. I'm asking you to pretend like that cloud doesn't exist because it doesn't. And I'm asking you to look at your real life, your real circumstances, and I'm asking you to take your real life into consideration whenever you are making your plans. And I think that you'll be much happier whenever you begin to do that. So one way that I've been able to do this for myself is to create more realistic goals for my lifestyle. And I understand that realistic is going to change depending on the season in my life, depending on how old my kids are, depending on how many kids I have. Like what's realistic for me is going to change. And so whenever I create plans for myself, that's the question that I ask myself, is this realistic? And I tend to know in my heart. And instead of ignoring my gut feeling and being like, yeah, you're gonna get this done, even though my gut is saying, girl, this is gonna be stressful. Instead of ignoring that, now I take that feeling into consideration. And when you start to create more realistic goals, you're going to feel like you're winning more often and you're going to stop feeling like a failure, which can happen when you set goals that are just not appropriate for this season of your life. And then when you show up for them, you accomplish less than you expected. So, you know, and the opposite things happen. The opposite happens when you plan realistically, knowing that I'm going to have somebody shout in the background. You guys can hear my kids back there while I'm trying to record this episode. There's going to be, you know, interruptions. There's going to be bumps in the road. And then when you show up and let's say that you have a day where everything works smoothly and then you end up doing more than what you planned, that's actually going to build your confidence as well. You're going to feel like an overachiever that day. Sorry for that little pause there. Had to go calm down some of that noise in the background. But you guys understand what I'm saying. Like if you set the bar just a little bit lower, I'm not saying that you're not capable of hitting that high bar. I'm just saying that when you show up on that really rough, crappy day, you hit that bar and you show up for your goals, you're gonna feel like a freaking winner. And then let's say that things are going really smooth you show up and hit that bar and you're like, girl, I can do a little bit more. You're gonna feel like a freaking overachiever and that's because you set yourself up to win. So that's all I'm saying. So I have a couple of different tactics on how I work through adversity, but for today, I really wanted to keep this podcast episode um, defined and I just wanted to focus on one of those tactics. and. In the future, I can come back and talk about some other things, which I'm sure you all know. You guys have been on my channel for a while. Y'all know what my, how my mindset works. But one way that I try to make realistic goals for myself is by putting less stuff for me to accomplish in one day and giving myself more time to get it done. So there's like a trade off here. You know, what I used to think constituted success before is putting this major list of to do's on my plate and getting it done in one day. But now I have swapped that around and I'm like, no, we're going to do less in one day, but we're going to spread this across a longer amount of time. And when you get into the habit of starting awkwardly early on projects and things that need to get done, then that is how you find that extra time so that you can do the bare minimum from day to day and still accomplish your goal. And so that is what I'm all about. And as I mentioned, it is awkward, you know, starting to plan for your Christmas in October. It is awkward. And for me, it is. It's I'm not I have not quite adapted to it, but I'm willing to start awkwardly early so that on a day to day basis, I have less to do, which sets me up for showing up even when I have a crappy day because I have like these little tiny tasks that need to get done instead of this mountain of work that needs to get done and that can make or break my Christmas if I have the energy and motivation to show up and do it that day. So I just wanted to give you a couple of examples on how I try to put less in one day yet give myself more time. So you guys know that zone cleaning is a popular component of you know a lot of people's cleaning system so if you have like deep cleaning projects that need to get done decluttering projects organizing projects that need to get done instead of the 
you know, older mentality of I'm gonna get it all done today, I'm gonna clean this room from top to bottom today, you're like, no, I'm gonna work on it 15 minutes per day. This is um, my pantry, I feel like, is one of the most popular examples because I literally remember very two vivid experiences of working with that pantry. And so the first time I did it, I felt like it all had to be done in one day. I was so burned out and exhausted by the time I finished that pantry the first time that it literally took years for me to want to come back and do it again. And then the next time that I did it, once I adopted my system, I'm like, no, we're going to do less per day and we're just going to show up and give myself more time. So I showed up 15 minutes per day and don't you guys know, it took me three days of that before the pantry was done. <laughs> And, you know, and honestly, with that being said, usually I do 15 minutes and then I have some tasks at the end where I kind of button up a little bit or clean up. So it probably was a little bit more than 15 minutes per day. You know, if you take the time that I took to throw stuff in the trash after my 15 minutes were over. But I'm just saying, like, if you have this goal to tackle that closet or to tackle that pantry, you are more likely to still be able to get it done when your kids school calls you telling you you need to pick up your sick baby when you're like oh girl I only need to work on this for 15 minutes if you started doing your zone cleaning first thing in the morning when you had your best energy by the time that school called you would already be done with your zone cleaning of the day or let's say that you weren't and you had to go get your baby your baby's probably going to be sleeping at some point or watching Coco Melon and it's going to feel like so much more doable to be like I'm just going to work on this for 15 minutes while they're watching Coco Melon and then I'm going to go back on the couch and chill I mean which one of those sounds easier to put into your schedule when you're having a day that's creating resistance for you for me it's the one where I have less to do per day but I'm giving myself more time to get it done I talked about project planning just a little bit a moment ago when I talked about starting Christmas freakishly early. I have a couple of videos on my channel where I talk about how to take really large tasks or um, goals and breaking them down into milestones and then planning it out. And you may notice on that that basically there's just one little simple task a day. It doesn't feel like a lot. But by the time you combine all of the work that you've done little by little over the course of several weeks, it is massive. The work that you accomplish when you break it down, it is massive. And so which one of these methods do you think is more likely to keep you on track? Doing, you know, a weekend's worth of work that basically whether you accomplish it or not will determine the result of your party or your holiday that you're planning for or doing like one little bite-sized task a day you know so when that annoying thing does pop up which one of these is more likely to keep your plan on track for me it's the one simple task per day if something annoying happens like I don't know you have a leak in your roof and now you have to put all your attention on that it's so much easier to be like okay I just have one simple task that I need to do today to contribute to my overall goal so while I'm waiting for the people to get here to fix my roof I can't do anything about it anyway let me just knock that simple task out it's much more realistic that you're going to knock out the simple task than to wait for the weekend to happen and then now you have this leak in your roof you're more likely to ditch all of your plans if you have 50 things to do and that's more likely to destroy your day so that's one thing that i look at another thing is with my um daily cleaning routine so you guys know my dishes laundry hot spots are my core focuses my um gateway habits if you will and if you get those done you know do the best you can with everything else because if you don't have a sink full of dishes and the laundry's put away you're just more likely to want to do other things like sweep and wipe down your counters like for me it's just hard to leave that stuff undone when my sink is looking shiny and beautiful and is smiling at me but let's say that you had a crappy day like which routines are you going to be more likely to show up for when you feel like you're at your you've been really stretched are you going to show up and just for the that you know mile long to-do list 
that 50, that list of 50 items that need to get done before you can go to bed. For me, I, I know myself, I'm more likely to ditch it. I'm more likely to be like, forget it, I'll do it in the morning. Or are you more likely to show up when you have that 10 minute timer. Cause honestly, if I'm feeling like crap, I don't even know if I can do 15, but I feel like I could talk myself into 10. I'm just being like, I'm gonna do what I can and I'm going to give myself a head start for tomorrow and then I'll pick up tomorrow and you know, and I'll pick up where I left off in the morning. For me, when I'm having a crappy day or I feel frustrated or I feel annoyed or I feel extremely stretched, I'm more likely to show up for the smaller thing than for that crazy to-do list, you know? So that's just me. And this is how I can keep my system flowing even when I feel like I'm experiencing a lot of pushback and a lot of resistance. Um, it's because I have set up things to feel realistic. I have set up tasks that can be accomplished in little crevices of my day whether it's realistic or not. And then honestly, you guys, one day's worth of work is not detrimental to my whole system. What's detrimental to my whole system is giving up and not showing up day after day after day after day. But if I have an off day, you know, a lot of these things are cyclical. Don't worry, girl, I'll be working on you next week. And then even like with the project man planning where I said I focus on one simple task of the day, Two simple tasks in a day is not that overwhelming for me. And so it's like, if I have to miss it one day because you know that's just the way the cookie crumbled, I didn't just like shoot myself in the foot for the next day because I'm trying to roll over this massive to-do list. I just rolled over one simple task. And so um, this is one tactic that I have found that has helped me out is finding ways to put less in one day and giving yourself more time to get it done so that way you can be more flexible with how you get it implemented into your day and then if it just doesn't happen it's a lot easier to squeeze it into the following day or to wait for it to cycle back around so that's the first topic that i wanted to talk about when it came to sticking to your plan through adversity so i want to talk ask you guys and turn the tables and ask you guys about what you guys like to do because I know that we are all busy moms we are all trying to make it work and I just want to know what mindsets do you use to help yourself push forward when things are not going to plan the kids are getting sick things are falling apart um, how do you guys keep your ship afloat um, ooh I just wanted to throw one more thing in here, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about like with meal planning, your girl always got some chicken nuggets in the fridge, okay? It's typically not on my meal plan, but this just goes back to living in my reality where things come up and it's always nice to know that I have something that will have my back. Y'all know my kids got food allergies. I can't be rolling through McDonald's, but if I could, that would totally be an option too. But it's always nice to know I have something that will kind of catch me or have my back on those days where things are not going to plan. So anyway, that was just a little thing that just came to my mind. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode. If you want to support the channel, a great way that you can do that is by subscribing and clicking the like button. We will continue this series, girl. I got a couple more uh, tricks and mindsets up my sleeve that I think will help you show up, you know, when you're experiencing adversity. So make sure that you subscribe so that you can kind of be a part of the conversation as we continue this topic and following episodes. Thank you guys for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.